Right, just a quick correction. It is Sunday, <laughs> March the 17th, 2024, from Tugum, Australia. I realised uh, on the playback in part one, I announced that it was Saturday. No, it is Sunday. Uh, right, let's move on to the testament, Omega Testament of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, part three. In the past, I had had the terrible experience of being betrayed by my friends. My jailer pretended to be my friend, pretended to repent, pretended to be by my side. But at the end of my life, I was endowed with a keen discernment of spirits and knew that I could not trust him and the people who lived with me day and night. My prison in exile was the Mater Ecclesiae Monastery, and there was a special reason for that. God saw to it that I was inside as his rightful shepherd and not outside to support the church, to pray and live in penance through a seemingly hidden and silent life without any comfort except the occasional visits that my jailer allowed because he had to obey his Lord, who saw to it that I was isolated, devoid of communication with the world. But I could never be deprived of communication with God. The more I suffered, the closer I came to the beating of Christ's heart. My life became a constant prayer of intercession. I discovered the way to be truly free, and that was through prayer. My mind was never trapped as some would have liked. My decaying body was tortured and treated with drugs that threatened rather than improved my health, bringing me closer to eternity bit by bit. I was aware of everything that was happening around me. God gave me clarity in his goodness, even though I was in such a painful situation. As the rightful representative of Christ, the only shepherd, I was held captive by my executioners. Those who one day appointed me shepherd of shepherds were the same ones who would crucify me a short time later. Just as it had happened to our Lord Jesus, on Palm Sunday. It is precisely in our human limitations and weaknesses that we are called to be conformed to Christ. With every minute that passed, I could clearly read my life in the light of Christ. Step by step, I saw the fulfillment of the prophecies. And at the end of my life, I saw myself more in heaven than on earth. I fully realized that I could be more useful to the church if I went to God than if I stayed here in this valley of tears. And this thought alone encouraged me to carry the cross forward out of love for him who gave himself completely to the cross out of love for me. This is my public confession. I, Benedict the Sixteenth, Vicar of Christ, the last and legitimate successor of the Apostle Peter, to whom the Lord has given the key to the kingdom of heaven, have been thrown into prison like Peter. Because I proclaim the truth, I have become hateful to the powers of the world, who with obvious cruelty have broken my clay body, but have freed my immortal spirit, which now enjoys the blessed sight of God, the reward of those who remain faithful to his Son, Jesus Christ, to whom all honour and glory belongs forever. So these are my words. Let's read that again. This is my public confession. I, Benedict XVI, Vicar of Christ, the last and legitimate successor of the Apostle Peter, to whom the Lord has given the key to the kingdom of heaven, have been thrown into prison like Peter. Because I proclaimed the truth, I have become hateful to the powers of the world, who with obvious cruelty have broken my clay body, but have freed my immortal spirit, which now enjoys the blessed sight of God, the reward of those who remain faithful to his Son, Jesus Christ, 
to whom all honour and glory belongs forever. So this is where I have... Um, <laughs> For all of the speculation and uh, in the Catholic world, those who think they know better, what truth was, Bene was it that Benedict proclaimed? He's already stated that he was known for his stand against relativism and modernism and the pedophiles and the, the homosexuals and the disgusting curia the the um, murders of his predecessors etc that was already well known by everybody so what truth did he proclaim could possibly have him locked up and treated as he was Part 1, Section 2 of his apostolic letter he called in Christum Credent. This is the meeting between he and Francis, March 23rd, 2013. And it's... Uh, this is... Benedict's reiteration of what he believed. Do I believe that Mr. Brian Lenigo Lightly Marshall is truly Jesus Christ reincarnated? Yes, I do believe he is Jesus Christ reincarnated. You see, many days ago, Mr. Brian Marshall sent me photographs of him and the Most Holy Shroud of Turin. He actually looks so much like that of the holy image on the shroud. There is no other explanation. He is simply the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty. I was so penetrated with love and compassion from God that I requested the photo I saw to be put in a place of honour somewhere. I was told my confidant uploaded it as a cover photo on a page he created as a tribute to me. He's referring to Father Giuseppe Ciavello. And out of all of the popes, even my own beloved predecessor, blessed, blessed John Paul II, Mr. Brian Marshall chose me to announce to the world his glorious return. That stunned me as well. My short eight-year pontificate is like a mere pebble in the shadow of a ginormous stone that is the long 27-year pontificate of blessed Pope John Paul II. Yet the reincarnated Christ saw me as a potential Pope. And for that I thank him from the bottom of my heart and wish to one day embrace him in person with my old frail hands. He is the most royal man alive, the true King of Kings, the true Lord of Lords, the true High Priest, and the most holy, reincarnated Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Almighty and Everlasting. Have faith in Him. To which I just cry aloud and cry out, Hello. Hebrew, after, follow, behind. And it does, the hello follows behind. The truth. This is why Benedict was treated the way he was as a prisoner in the Vatican. Shut up without, as he said, enlightenment or visitors, only that allowed by his jailer, Georg Ganswein. This is the letter that he wrote in Christum Credent. Believe in Christ. This apostolic letter is in regards to Brian Lenigo Lightly Marshall's claim to be the Christ. 
the Roman Pontiff Emeritus Benedict XVI's response to Marshall's claim. The Third Vatican Ecumenical Council outlined by Marshall. The meeting which occurred with the Roman Pontiff Francis and the Pope Emeritus. The Roman Pontiff Francis' response to Marshall's claim and a prayer for the Universal Church reflecting Brian Marshall. This is the lightning strike over St. Peter's Basilica. It was 5.55 p.m. on February the 11th, 2013, after Benedict had announced his resignation from the active ministry of the papal office. And if you remember at the time, there was so much speculation about God being displeased, all kinds of things. Well, no, it was assigned to us, 5.55 p.m., 5.55. <laughs> the number of times the word Christ is used and found within 522 verses within the New Testament of the 1611 King James Bible, 522 being... Amma, the mother measure as a cubit. With speed and cunning they stage a coup d'etat and convened a conclave to choose my supposed successor, bypassing my authority. In the conclave there was a majority of Masonic cardinals, a long organised attempt to undermine the College of Cardinals, for which there is irrefutable evidence with extensive information. The infiltration was led by Masonic allies in the United States, and at the behest of that country's then President, Barack Obama. Pressure was put on the conclave, demanding that I be replaced by their candidate, because the world's major elites, and China in particular, demanded it. They had frozen the Vatican Bank and even threatened to kill me if I didn't resign the next morning. It was an untenable situation that floated like a sharp sword in my soul. It is clear that the media was manipulated by the Vatican to destroy my image and make the world hate me. The country of the United States contributed the most to my coup. Every time I said a word, there was a great uproar among the cardinals, especially among the German clergy, who were among the first to raise their hands against me. And then I said to myself, a son who raises his hand against his father and causes a violent schism and encourages other communities to follow his example of stubborn rebellion. This situation reached such an unbearable and discouraging level for me that the Holy Spirit of God inspired me in prayer to decide to continue my Peter ministry in a different way, not so much actively and publicly as contemplative and prayerful. In this way, I managed to divert attention from me within the central administration of the Curia of the Vatican as they demanded of me, and thus avert the greatest schism of all. All time, rather. As Supreme Pontifex, I stood alone without the support of anyone except a few loyal cardinals. Suddenly I was alone with God, and I realised that when human words have no effect, there is only one way out, prayer. And that's what I did. I immersed myself in prayer, lived in repentance, which was torture for my modernist enemies, the friends of pederasty and all those revolutionary ideologies that go against God's law and all Christian morality. I, with the help of divine grace, have turned the bitter into the sweet and have taken advantage of the suffering for the good of the whole church and her mystical body entrusted to me. It is precisely in human weakness and limitation that we are called to live in accordance with Christ. They manipulated the course of my life 
and made me a despicable person to the world, who had to be replaced as soon as possible. They spread the untrue rumour that I had protected pedophile priests, when the reality was very different. In imitation of Christ, the Divine Master, I remained silent and did not open my mouth. I relied on divine intervention, placed myself in the hands of the righteous judge, and like a meek lamb I was led to the slaughter to shed my blood for the good of the Church. As a true pastor of the Catholic Church, I did not back down, even though I was called a traitor by the manipulated and generous, generously paid information of the various media. My enemies said that the Church would harden with me and that I intended to return to the pre-conciliar era. I was the most reviled and discredited Pope. My name caused gnashing of teeth in the corridors of the Vatican Curia. Among the many slanders that were spread about me was that I was a coward who would get off the cross and flee from the wolves. Everything I said in public or in private was twisted with the sole intention of organising a coup. Another said, he is the worst Pope we have ever had. And so one by one the swords drilled into my heart. Faced with the harsh reality I saw, I went my way. And that way was to follow Christ to Calvary. The disobedience of the College of Cardinals reached such a level that I could not possibly rule. I'll end this section here and come back with uh, part four.